Application users frequently manage data using external spreadsheet or CSV files. Code on Time apps make it easy to synchronize the data in these files using data import. Our app displays a list of products available in the products table. Let's create a list of products in an external spreadsheet. Each product in our spreadsheet will have a name, a supplier, a category, a price, a count in our warehouse, as well as the shelf. Let's add some sample rows. Save and close this spreadsheet file. Let's begin the import process by pressing Actions, Import from File. Let's select the file that we created. Press Submit to start processing the file. The next screen allows us to bind columns from the file to fields in the products controller. Notice that the column name has been automatically connected to the product name field, as well as supplier, category, and price. The count column has not been automatically configured. Let's bind this column to units in stock by using the dropdown. There is no matching shelf data field in the products table, so we will ignore this column. Go ahead and press start import. The application will run through each row and insert records in batches. If there are any errors, a file will be generated and a prompt to download will be shown. Let's save and open this file. This file contains a list of records that were unable to be imported. The first column shows the line number from the original file. The second column shows the error. It looks like the supplier, code on time, is not present in the database. Let's change it to a supplier that does exist in the database. Save and close this file. Let's try to re-import the record that failed to import previously. Select the error file that was generated. Make sure to bind the count column to units in stock. And press Start Import. It looks like our import completed with no errors. Let's go ahead and find our new products. Let's see what happens if we try to import again from the original file. Notice that duplicate records have been created. Let's go ahead and remove these duplicate records and enable duplicate testing. Let's enable multi-select and delete the duplicate records. Switch back to the application generator Click on the project name and press Design. In the Project Explorer, 
Switch to the Controllers tab. Expand Products, Views, and Create Form 1. The import process uses Create Form 1 view to insert records. Double click on the product name field. Let's ensure that any products that share the same product name will not be inserted during the import process. Tag this field, import duplicate test. And save the field. If we were to try and import the file one more time, none of the products in the spreadsheet file will be imported. Let's allow users to update values of these existing products during the import process. Double click on the units in stock field. Tag the field import duplicate except. If the data import process finds a duplicate field based on the product name, it will then create an update statement to update any fields marked as import duplicate except. Save the field and browse the app. Let's make some changes in our spreadsheet file. First, let's remove the last product. Let's change the price of product 3 to $1,000. Let's change the count to 75. Save and close the file. Let's try to import one more time. Notice that for product 3, the units in stock field has been updated. However, the unit price field has not been marked as import duplicate except and has not been updated. We can also import products for a specific supplier. First, let's delete these four products. Navigate to the suppliers page. Let's open the form for a particular supplier. This supplier currently has two products. Let's import products for this particular supplier. Notice that the supplier company name field has been pre-selected. The products have been successfully imported. Let's switch back to the products page. Notice that our three new products now show up on this page as well, assigned to the same supplier.